2026 World Cup team could look a lot different to how it did at the 2024 Euros. So should we be getting excited again? So in terms of the squad so far, Jordan Pickford, 30 years old. Well, this sorry, guys, is their age at now. the next one right now. now? Okay. So Jordan Pickford is 30. Aaron Ramsdale is 26. Dean Henderson, 27. Sam Johnston obviously didn't make it. And James Trafford as well uh, as obviously the under-21 goalkeeper did brilliantly for them. Obviously, he's had a, a tricky season this year. Nick Pope, uh, another one as well. He's maybe a little bit older, isn't he, Nick Pope? Um, how are we feeling about the goalkeepers? Pickford's actually had a lot of lot of heat, despite making a solid amount of saves in the in that uh, semi final, and everyone lauding, like you say, go flip flopping with the penalties. Everyone going crazy about that as well. A lot of people get really annoyed about the sort of long passing, short passing thing. Right. What yeah. do you think about that one? So basically, it, it seemed like the body language of some of the players at times. It was like, here, give me, give me it. Right. And he was either trying his three quarter ping, which actually did once or twice. The Saka once did, did nicely. But was also trying to play it long to Kane, and Kane will get to Kane. Um, <laughs> so. When you see that, you see the sort of players coming short, but then going long. The the two options it seemed like people were saying was either he's not good enough to play those simple passes, or he's been told to do something different. From your experiences, Harry, what do you think uh, is the correct answer? The same thing that we've been I've been saying throughout is the hesitation. Mm. It's the un not being sure of who you are, what you are. And then when you have that, there's going to be clashes. Now there's always going to be clashes in games where a player does something, and then someone else has a different opinion and then you have an the argument and it goes on and blah, blah, blah. That's fine. But it's when it happens so often of players not being sure of what they think the right approach should be. And again, it's just the, the lack of the overall belief in the approach. And then when you have that lack of overall belief in the approach, you're going to have lots of occasions within games where there's going to be disagreements. There's going to be miscommunication. There's going to be someone thinking this, someone thinking that. And yeah, I, I don't I don't have an issue with Pickford. I'm not a goalkeeper expert at all, but I like him a lot. I think he's always performed admirably for England. Kai, Everton fan, thoughts on Jordan Pickford in terms of his passing range and ability. If that is, if we're trying to find this utopia that gets us to win the World Cup playing, you know, beautiful flowing football, is he is he the goalie to stick with? Yeah, technically, I think he can't be faulted really. I know he's got the long pass is the highlight real stuff that people push. Sure, he played it to Stones, played to Gay several times. I'm with you. I, I, for me, I when I was seeing those long passes, it was Kane not contesting it that was a bigger problem. And if Ivan Tony stood there, and or Calvert Lewin obviously, and winning more headers, all of a sudden you're good at passing. Yeah, we're sticking with Pickford. Yeah, no one else sort of on the horizon. Trafford, I think. We've not seen it yet, and I don't. I think with Pickford, the other thing that I think is crucial is he's at Everton for the long run now, isn't he? Yeah, he's Feels not like leaving. He's you know South Southall two point defenders. Um, so let's work our way through it. Carl Walker, he will be thirty six. Let's say he's let's say he's similar player as he is right now. Um, I think he's going to be at City. He wants to finish at Sheffield United, doesn't he? So he might be at the point where I'd be interested to know what his um his contracts up to, but. I wouldn't be surprised if he... I think he'll stick around, you know. Mm. And I think even if he's just in the squad, I don't I don't think that's the end of the world. I mean, is it, does he get in the squad? Is he playing for Man City? That's yeah. a different question. Well, we were saying that, I think, on the ball, it's a weird one where you kind of... You hammer Trent for off the ball. But, like, you know, if we're talking about how we want us to be, again, you've got to be braver and go, well, no, let's... Like, this guy's world class yeah. in terms of... Trent as a right back. Do we need to literally go look enough now? Trent has to be the right back. I think so. I, and again, I'm kind of with you. Like I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me if you name that first squad in September for those Nations League games and Kyle Walker is still around because he still offers so much value in terms of his defending, which is something that he was kind of lambasted for before he went to City. That was a, as a Spurs fan, that was kind of a frustration for a long while. It's something that was a bit of a slow burn in terms of his ability to improve his one-on-one -on -one defending. But it's on the ball, and it's when you get into those positions where Saka will get to the byline and cut it back and there if you think about Trent at Liverpool and it's why I thought Trent and Bellingham will be such a kind of interesting partnership throughout the tournament if Trent was used properly because Bellingham always likes to make those kind of late runs to the back post if you can kind of create those overloads cut the ball back to Trent he is excellent at whipping that ball in first time without even really having to look yeah whereas Walker always wants to take that touch and then it's hesitation keep or go Carl Walker 
I'd say go. I I, th- I wouldn't have a problem with him still being around, but I think if you want to be ruthless and move on into a new era, I think it's more about setting it up for Trent rather than rather than the fact that Walker's got nothing to offer us. I just think that if you're going to go into this new era, I think it's got to be time for someone else. Okay. Do you know what? I'll come back to Trent starting. Just quickly, say go or stay with Carl Walker, do we call it? Because there's some fantastic other options, go. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, Harry. Uh, Kieran Tripper, I think similar vein. I think he's been fantastic for England. Um, and I think, the, you know, the, the annoyance with him, like he didn't want to play left back. <laughs> <Yeah, it's laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> the poor blokes had to take a lot. But I, I've got to be honest, it, it was wildly frustrating seeing him on that side and I, I think for, I think actually for him it's one where you go shake his hand go like phenomenal but we've got depth there I'm going to go for a few that could just go Lewis Dunk 32 go 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 um, Harry Maguire we'll put him in that one as well do we see him returning I think he'll get more caps mm. yeah oh, again it comes down to the to the manager to a point where is he going to be in two years time Sheffield United. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and Trippier is going to go there as well. Carl Norton. Um, I I think he's another one where you go that uh, sort of wiping of the the sort of slab. Yeah. In this instance, do you think Mark Gay and John Stones is the partnership moving forward? Because no. some of those other guys we've got, like like I said to you earlier, right at the start, Levi Cole. You were saying it. You know, in terms of those young players, he is one of the best out there. Yeah. Um, do you stand by that? Because you've yes. got Branthwaite. A lot of talk about. Uh, him before the tournament in terms of him how is he not in the squad left sided as well but Gay's done so well and again a lot of things can change Colwell is he starting for Chelsea in two years time Bloody possibly better, yeah, better, better, be. So. better be yeah uh, Gerald Kwanzaa is he playing for Liverpool in two years time it depends because I think those links have sort of started to come out about Mark Gay to Liverpool now so it's like if Mark Gay he gets that move that kind of blocks that pathway for Kwanzaa a little bit totally but again I mean, if, from a Liverpool perspective, how long has Van Dijk got left at the kind of that level? So then are you bringing in Gahey to be the, I guess, the the guy to come in after him and then have Gahey as the right arm and Quanz as the left arm? Branthwaite as well, where's he going to be in two years' time? I think it'll be interesting to see how his trajectory carries on. Um, and you talk about that sort of Swiss Army enough. There's different types, isn't there? There's the centre back version of that that can play as a full back. Well, Konza is Konza is that now, isn't he? Really on the other side, I suppose. And Ben White, if Ben White kind of comes back into the fold. So Ben White, yeah. Do you expect him to return like that straight away? Oh, it's I impossible, think. I think, to say. Speaking but, about Saka earlier and how do you get the best out of Saka, well, you get the Arsenal right side and you put it in the England <laughs> team. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's not that difficult, is it? No. I think. You know, he's 26. Obviously, he'll be 28. But then another two years, those two playing together for another two years. You know, we talk about... That's why I was going to wait with the Trent shout. <laughs> is you've got all that. Does it come down... Does the use of Ben White come down to the fact that, A, where is Luke Shaw in two years' time? He'll be 31. But obviously, he's had... You know, God, we only got him to play nine minutes in the final. But also... um if we, there is a, a left back on the horizon, or, or sorry, whoever that who is that left back, like Lewis Hall, yeah, yeah, okay. right now, or Livermento. So if you play Lewis Hall, do you play Trent as well? I think that's again, and the next question is like in terms of the evolution of football, we've seen a lot of inverted fullbacks, and we've also seen a lot of four big boys at the back. We've also seen three and one. We've yeah, seen a lot yeah. of that elbow, elbow yeah. but we don't see. Robertson and Trent anymore you know is there a way of that coming back yes yeah of course there, is. there we go done <laughs> <laughs> like Simple. yeah there's no there's like, I think that's what that's, that's part of the problem with football people follow trends just like there's no wrong way like just because a team is successful doing it a certain way doesn't mean that's the only way to do it right and there's no so yeah it's about who have I got what have I got how can I make the most out of it and negate the weaknesses and you know, really um, strengthen the positives. Mm. So if you've got, let's say, for example, if you choose Lewis Hall and Trent, all right, well, you know there's going to be certain areas that might need to be filled. So you might think, well, it's worth doing that by playing him here to cover him there, for example. And you just work away around it. You look at what you've got and go from there. Who is your back line? What have you guys got? Mine was Trent, Stones, Gahey, Colwell as a back four. My only other question mark is then, I, I, I feel like in a couple of years' time, Branthwaite will be, if not there, he is knocking right on the door. I don't think it's a case of like, there won't be an argument as to say, well, do you take him? It will be, does he start? And he'll mm. definitely go. 
and then is there a better balance between Stones and Branthwaite or Gahey and Branthwaite than there is with Stones and Gahey? Because they've worked really well, but is there a better solution? What was your bet for? Pickford, if Rhys James can prove his fitness and stay fit, then he's at, on the right. Centre half is Stones and then either Branthwaite or Colwell, depending on how the next two years look for either of them. If Colwell starts, I back him because I think he's just got that next level class. I agree. And yeah, then really on like the it. left, honestly, Livermore or Lewis Hall right now. Because mm. uh, yeah, I think Luke Shaw. Yeah, you just don't. You can't. Can't rely on it. Can't rely on him. But yeah. you can't rely on Reese James either. And that's why. There's that's where there's an good. asterisk with James. So it would be Trent if there's. Yeah. One thing that I, I keep going back to is uh, I just think. I think there may come a day where where we where we go. Rico Lewis has to be in this team somehow. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, that's I think a possibility. He's really yeah. special. Yeah, he's I think he's on the really ball. He's special. just outstanding. Midfielders, then again, I think kind of in danger. I don't. I think that there's not many like old boys here. We've kind of got through that now, apart from Harry Kane. But in terms of the midfielders that were taken, of course, Conor Gallagher, Adam Wharton, Kobe Maynou, Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham, uh, Bire Eze. So I think there's a few here in terms of like running. Possibly running hot. Can they keep this up? Conor Gallagher, Adam Wharton, Eze. I back all three of them. Yeah. Where will Conor Gallagher be in two years' time? I think that could play a part. Adam Wharton could it could be a little uh, Calvin Phillips syndrome, and it could be the same for Eze. If he's at if he goes to Man City, can't get in the team, and isn't playing. He won't be in the squad. That's Look at Jack agreement. Grealish. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing because there's a lot of competition there as well. And, you know, my squad before the tournament, I, it broke my heart, but like, I couldn't put him in because I was like, we've got enough 10s here. We've got Phil Foden, we've got Cole Palmer, which we can kind of chuck Cole Palmer maybe in this conversation as well because obviously he's phenomenal, um, but he's also running hot. Um, so, yeah, so I kind of got to go. I, I could see someone coming in and, Displacing him, I'll be honest. Wharton is in that team for me for that World Cup. I, I genuinely really? do believe that. Wow. I think I don't think he's running hot. I think there is. I think he's the he's the guy to partner with Rice. I've kind of been a lot of people have been saying it all tournament, and I like I love Kobe Mainu, and I think Mainu will be there, and that future will be there for him as well. But when it comes back to that balance, and again, it depends how the team kind of sets up and looks. But I think it's inevitable that he's there. I, what, so where's he playing in two years' time? It's not going to be Crystal Palace then. Bayern Munich. Really? Potentially. Wow. If if things go wrong with company at Bayern, it feels like Glasner might be that next guy and then Wharton comes in there because they're interested in him already. I need to see a little bit more. I think because I think there's, you know, in the sort of growth of you as a man, you, there's the adrenaline of being there and then there's the like, then you kind of have to go through the kind of like, oh, okay, I've got to do it again now. Right. And the, the expectation being different, that's a different kind of pressure that can kind of um, hit you, right? Declan Rice. Um, I think I've now got to a point, and it's one where there's not a, a good enough option elsewhere. I think I've come back on this idea of like him as the six. I'm not seeing it. Again, you know me. I don't believe in positions. But if you're yeah. using Declan Rice as the one of the first receivers from the back line to set the tone you've got problems because yeah. whether you like it or not as good as he is he has never shown that he's someone comfortable receiving back to goal turning that's how the um, Holland goal came from in terms of that midfield in terms of any other names Curtis Jones I think we just, you're talking about so Conor Gallagher I think depending on the manager it's, it's if he becomes is his of more use or not I think if it's Eddie Howe you're right I think it's Lee Carsley I think in the squad I think, squads, I think he's a great asset for the squad mm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, James Madison, uh, Jaden Sancho, who's only 24. Jack Grealish, of course, missed out on this. He'll be 30 in two years' time. Um, How does this look if you have four midfielders? You have Wharton, Deeper, or Mainu, maybe. You have Rice, Foden, and then Bellingham as well. So, sort of box, yeah. Yeah, Diamond. Yeah. I guess then, yeah, well, it's it's all dependent on everyone around it, isn't it? Then we've got two fullbacks pushing on, have we? Is that what's <laughs> going on? Love it. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Gobby Maynard, is he, do you think he's set in stone to start for the next 10 years? Or do you think it's one where he could have a, sort of some ups and downs? I've been blown away by his been continued great, he? composure. Yeah, so he's been great, hasn't he? That, that sort of taking it on that back foot. <sighs> yeah. So strong. The, so uh, strong under pressure as well. Yeah. The Foden chance in the Dutch game where he sort of almost took it around the goalkeeper and got cleared off the line. That ability from Maynard to just receive it on the half turn 
and then just burst into that space straight away and drive with it and keep it so close to you and play the pass at the right time. Mm. I want to go into just football incredible. coaching nerd here, but what I love about <laughs> Kobe Mainu, I love how he's done it a lot in the youth team and I want to see him keep doing it. He's really good passing with the outside of his foot. Yeah. And the benefit of that is that it, it you can catch players by surprise when you do yeah. that and you can get really tight to them and just pop it around them and go again. It's such a useful trait to have. Mm. And I really want to see him just keep having the courage to do that and to like make the play happen. If he does that, then yeah, I think he's, yeah. if he does that, he's a level ahead of Wharton for me. So who's your midfield? I would love to see Mainu, Rice, Foden, Bellingham. I'd love to see that. Yeah. See how that works. I'm still... We've just seen that, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> but as in... In like, a different way, yeah. It, yeah, but actually being allowed to... Mm. You know, yeah. I'm thinking about who that manager is going to be. I know it sounds crazy and I hate myself for saying it, but I'm still struggling to find where it's best to place Foden in this team. Because my midfield was Rice, Wharton and Bellingham. But then I just, whether that's in that front three or not with Foden, I don't know. But I think, again, I kind of like that idea of almost that bit more of a box, bit more of a diamond in midfield with with Rice, Mainu, Bellingham and Foden because I think it just gets the best out of all of them. Again, kind of continuing to play Bellingham and Foden as those two tens. Also, like one name I wanted to chuck out there, someone like Harvey Elliott. I think if Lee Carsley is in, in this... Uh, in that role as manager, then there's got to be a place for Harvey Elliott, I think, because I think in terms of the like the intelligence, the freedom, when you've seen him for the under 21s, he's on so another good. level yeah. to, to, to the rest of these guys. Him and R Rico Lewis, who I can't, got, yeah, it's those two. It's just on my mind all yeah. the time. Okay, forwards. Uh, Cole Palmer. Will Cole Palmer be starting in two years' time? Yeah, probably to be honest. Yeah, I, I do you know what? It's so difficult to pick a team right now. <laughs> 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 <Told> you. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> Don't want to it's say crazy, it. isn't it? It's, it's so. That's why I tend not to like to do predicting teams because so much is going to change and there's going to be so many different plugs to it. You know, because I, I, in my head, right, I can see an amazing world where you have those four, like I said, in midfield. And if Kane is still the Kane, we do know he is. Obviously, he's going to start. Yeah. And you put Saka alongside him. Or let's say for whatever reason, Kane isn't that. Let's say that he's let's say that he actually has what, hit a physical waning. yeah sure and in two years time it's going to be worse I'm not saying that's going to be the case at all just saying if so then imagine having like Saka and Palmer as like yeah. the two wide strikers with that four behind them that's pretty special to me as well yeah man that's crazy is he running hot no 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 no, no, not, no, no, no. he's no, phenomenal it's cold it's phenomenal <laughs> yeah, sorry I got it <laughs> I, I'll put it out there I just think I think he is phenomenal and I don't think he's you know he's not you know, he's not Michael Ricketts. He's not going to like, you know, not going to like ever play for England again. I just think, yeah, I just, I hope people remember that when he has a, I think he's got to have a sort of difficult patch at some point. Yeah. Um, but, but I think I, I look at him and think he has the mindset to get through that. No yes, problem. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So I think the composure's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Um, Ollie Watkins, Ivan Tony, Bakaya Saka. Now, Watkins 28, Ivan Tony 28, Kane 30. Obviously, they'll all be in the 30s. By this point, Jared Bowen, 27, will be 29. Foden will be 26 in that World Cup. Um, I think it's going to be difficult. I think it's one where it's not going to be anyone's out-and-out -out team. So that I think, again, this manager's got a really, I think he'll have long enough, go, okay, what? It, what all these guys are going to be here generally. What do I want my team to look like and how do I want them to If play? you do it right and you get the, the principles in place and locked in, you don't have to get locked into any team. There could be loads of different possibilities that work for you because everyone falls into these are the principles it's not philosophy big difference principles and then within that we can adapt it as and how we need to mm. to base based on that it doesn't have to be a starting 11 obviously as, as we all know um but yeah i who will be the so okay final question you've got two tottenham fans here harry kane will he still be playing in 2026 and will he be starting as well yeah yeah you think so i think harry kane partly to his detriment, has almost put too much pressure on himself to... He's come out and said so many times, I want to be a player that plays basically into my 40s. But I just, with his body, you can kind of just... It feels like it's almost catching up on him a little bit already. But I still don't think there's a world in which he's not the striker in the next World Cup. I think that then becomes that conversation for the Euros. Much of like a lot of this, a lot of these players, it's like when you zoom out and look at it in four years' time, it's going to be so different because... All of those strikers that we just named, including Kane, are going to be at least 30 by the time the next World Cup rolls around. Mm. The next striker, you'd argue, that is on the conveyor belt behind them is Dominic Solanke, who is, again, I think people, 
I think people have got this idea in their heads a bit with Watkins and Tony and, and Solanke that they're a lot younger than they are. But they're so close to Kane in terms of their yeah. age, especially yeah, Tony right. and Watkins. Two years, isn't it? It's crazy. So again, there might be someone kind of coming along that we don't really see. In terms of out and out strikers, we're, we're not seeing. A, there's not an outrageous amount of them. Even in that under 21s you've got Anthony Gordon, who was obviously top scorer. Who I think you know it'd be interesting to see how. Again, if it does a, with the right kind of manager, does he take someone's spot? And it's a bit of a thing. Yeah. But he, we've seen he's obviously got a great mindset himself. And we're all a bit gutted he didn't play more. And he was someone who will stretch it. Because that's the thing with Kane. He's like, we're going to learn from this or not. And we had to, we've got to, we've got to have someone that's making the pitch a little bit Do you know what I'd love to see times. as well? I'd love to see this. Let's say Kane doesn't exist, all right? I'd love to see someone like Jaden Sancho there and runners behind him and beyond him. Because yeah. he is it, as you good as... you have to play some runners in behind. Like, who, yeah, yeah, but he is, but, imagine, that, but he is as good as he gets in the final third in terms of combining play, that coolness, that composure. You know, something like that. There's so much there that you can do. You just have to be brave enough to do it. But yeah. Yeah. I've I've always liked that idea of Sancho centrally. I think yeah. those kind of like cute little balls between the lines. It's so he's so good at. I, he's I don't amazing, think he's, he's an phenomenal out. footballer. I would love to see Palmer as that almost like floating kind of centre forward with runners in behind him as well. I think he's so. Who clever. are these runners? Like this is that's the thing. I think there's a, the stardust of all the players that that Southgate's fallen into it as well. We all have a little bit. None of them running behind. Mm. I think you might just have to do that thing where you go, there's that guy who doesn't look, when they line up, you go, oh yeah, he's playing as well. But he just offers yeah. what is necessary. Yeah. You know? Is there any way that Rashford comes back into yeah, that conversation? Definitely, yeah, definitely. There's definitely yeah. a world where he comes back in course series, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gordon, you know, Gordon can be that guy yeah. as well. Yeah. There's yeah. options. There's loads of options. There's, it's really exciting if you allow it to be exciting. Are yeah. you trying to say it's coming home? No, I'm not. I'm definitely not. <laughs> <laughs>